those things? They were like sea monkeys. You know how on the package, they're like in a happy kingdom and everyone's smiling. Yeah. They're not like that at all. Victor, I need your help. I asked him first. My problem, Bigger. And welcome everyone again to The Kiosk Presents. I'm Steve and today we have two very special guests, stars of the new Disney movie, Frank and Weenie. Uh, it's Charlotte DeHaan and Atticus Schaefer. Welcome guys. Hello. Hello. Now, both of you guys are experienced uh, film people. You've both done, uh, uh, I know Ch uh, Atticus has done uh, voiceover work before. Uh, Charlie, have you done voiceover work before? I have not. This is my first voiceover thing ever. Was it difficult for you? I thought it was easier. I, like, you just have a lot less to worry about than when you do, like, live action stuff. You don't have to worry about, like, blocking your word to stand or, like, you don't even have to memorize your lines in voiceover work or, like, you, you can just wear, like, your school clothes. Like, I could just go after school. And yeah, wear, you, like, don't ha you don't have to worry about makeup and the choreography and everything. You more or less just put, focus more on your voice yeah. and then once you do that, the emotion can really come out in your voice and kind of make the character more endearing or, or have more characteristics. That's a lot of fun. Now, I know in voiceover work, a lot of the times actors don't necessarily meet with each other. Did you guys get to meet with the full cast? We met this weekend. Yes. <laughs> all right, so you met for the first time this weekend, but during filming, you guys were pretty much all separate. Yeah. Right. I, right. Yeah, I didn't meet any, anyone. For, uh, I knew Robert Capron, who plays Bob, from beforehand, like from a couple of years ago. And actually, the two people I met before seeing uh, uh, a screening of uh, Frank and Weenie was uh, I actually met Robert Capron because he was hired on my, on my other uh, ABC show, and we met, and it was pretty much, oh... You're the voice of Bob, aren't you? Yes, I am. I'm the voice of Edgar. Oh, pleasure to meet you. And um, but then also the other one is is Tom Kenny. I actually did get to work with Tom Kenny um, because since the Peter Laurie impression was a new impression for me, I work best when I when if it's a new impression that I hear it right away and then say it. So they they also hired him to read opposite me and then to uh, say the dialogue in a Peter Laurie impression, and then I would do an impression of his impression. Have you, did you guys get to meet Tim Burton? Yes. yes. W was he larger than life? He was. He's surprisingly yeah. normal. He, I mean, he was surprisingly normal, but he was also very creative. Yeah, cool. and, and, to, and to be a part of this, this mindset and, and, and his legacy, even to be that much of a spec and from, from this film alone, it, it was amazing. All right, well, let's get into the film a little bit. Can you tell me what happens? What, what is this movie all about? Victor Frankenstein's dog, Sparky, dies, and it's his only friend, and it's his, like, prized pet. And he, um, he doesn't have any friends, so when his dog dies, he gets the idea from science class to reanimate his dog's corpse, and all the other kids in the town try to copy his experiment uh, to win the town science fair. And my character, who is kind of like a misfit, semi-villain, but he does have a good heart, when he finds out about this, uh, it's just the most morbid and over-the-top thing that's ever happened to him. And so it, it, it takes him on this natural high, and he wants to stay with it, and so he wants to try to bond himself with Victor. So, but things don't go as well for the other kids. Right, right. <laughs> How scary is this movie? What what ages do you guys think would be too young for it? I don't I don't, I don't think it's like scary at all. Like the scariest part is I don't think like little kids little kids would be afraid of it because it's not like there's not like a, like it's not a horror movie. It's not. It's not meant to be to, like, a horror movie. It's meant to be a kind of more or less a dark comedy. Yeah, like it has a lot of references to old horror movies. Yeah, but the the part that people got. I mean, not like, scared at, really, but the part that people got most like, affected by, I think, is just when Sparky dies, if people, like, have a pet that they... Kids, like, little kids might think that's really sad if they have, like, a dog that died at some point, so... And also, hopefully, well, the message I want to see from this film is the fact that I, I, I really hope that will inspire a new generation of kids and people to want to see the old classic black-and-white films and kind of keep that part of our history alive. That is actually a very cool thing, because it's one of the first kids movies in a long time that has been a horror movie. Yes. That is sorry, been a black and white movie and right. been referenced those older horror movies. Right. So it makes it seem a lot older, a lot more classic automatically because of the black and white. Yes. Well, I want to thank you both for coming in. 
Uh, Frank and Weenie uh, opens nationwide on October 5th. Uh, go out, check it out. It's great for all families. Uh, thank you so much, Charlie. Thank you so much, Atticus, for coming on the Kiosk Presents with us. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Edgar? Hey. Edgar, what are you doing here? I know. What? I know. Know what? You know. No. I think I know what you know I know. Look, I don't know what you think I know, but I don't know it. Your dog is alive! <gasps> It's impossible. I know, I know it is so impossible, but you did it, you did it. So show me how, or I'll tell everyone. Oh, Mrs. Frankenstein. Shh. 